After washing up on the beach, Daryl has the daunting task of figuring out where he is when all of the signs are. In a foreign language, eventually he comes upon a boat where some English-speaking refugees left, a tape recorder that explains how they came to be in France. Unfortunately, their journey ended in tragedy like so many others, but thanks to their maps and notes, Daryl has a good place to start. He makes his own recording, offering that he's from the Commonwealth in America and he's trying to get home to his family. From the port, Daryl starts trekking across France. He doesn't know where he is or where he's going, but he's on his way somewhere. Daryl learns the hard way that French walkers have evolved somehow when he runs into several walkers at an abandoned market. Their blood is like acid. It burns through anything and everything, and even their skin will burn human flesh. He stops to tend to the wound on his arm, and that's when he sees a figure draped in robes. There are signs all around him that read God loves you according to his French dictionary. Is the woman on the hill responsible for these signs? Daryl stumbles upon a woman, Maribel, and her uncle, Gilaume. They seem innocent enough, offering food in exchange for the medicine Daryl found. When they find out he's American, the woman switches over to English. Gilaume brings up World War II and how the U.S. and France fought together. Daryl reminds them that there aren't any more countries. A truck pulls up and men get out. Maribel explains to Michelle, the lead soldier, that Daryl doesn't speak English. When the men get rough, he springs into action and kills one of the men. After they have been overpowered, Maribel kills the other man. Daryl has a wound in his neck and asks her to bring his bag. But Gilaume knocks Daryl out and they flee. Thankfully, the woman he saw on the road appears before he passes out. Daryl dreams about Judith and Carol. It's a fever dream because his arm is infected. He comes close to waking up. Spotting two nuns nearby, they cauterize his arm, which leads him to pass out once more. The next time he wakes up, he meets Isabel. She speaks French, and she assures him that he's a guest. They had to tie him up earlier for his own safety because he'd been attacked by a burner, a type of hungry one. She knows all about him thanks to the tape recorder. How did you come to be in France? She asks. A bunch of bad decisions, he replies. Later, Isabel tends to his wounds while he bathes. She sees his scars and he sees hers. She says she lost a sister. Once he's dressed, they walk through the abbey and Daryl asks about the boy, Laurent. He saw earlier in the courtyard. She showed him their impressive stash of weapons. We can defend ourselves if we need to, she says. Daryl sees a radio in Per Jean's office, but the good father is nowhere to be found. While he eats lunch, he sees Laurent mirroring his actions. Before he finishes lunch, Laurent comes to introduce himself and tells him all of the knowledge Per Jean has taught him. He asks about Daryl's family because he knows he's sad and homesick. You deserve a happy ending too he says, using the same phrase Judith used before he left. Maribel and Gilaume are walking along the road laughing at Daryl's dictionary when another truck pulls up. Codrin gets out and asks about two of his men who disappeared on the road. When they say they don't know anything, Codrin attacks Gilaume. Maribel reveals what happened back at their camp, and that a mystery man had attacked the soldiers. Codring kills Gilaume and takes Maribel with them. They go to the campsite and it turns out that Michel was Codrin's brother. He's a walker now, which means Codrin is on the warpath and he wants revenge against the American. They find one of Isabel's flyers and decide to go to the abbey. They leave Maribel behind as a sign of their mercy. As Daryl works to get into Per Jean's office, he hears the unmistakable sound of a walker. He finds Laurent reading poetry in front of a jail cell where a walker is locked up inside. It's Per Jean. Laurent says they're waiting for him to rise again. Daryl has had enough of the creepy convent. 
Isabel pleads with him to stay and help them deliver Lauren to safety. They believe he's the Messiah, meant to guide humanity to a new age. He's a miracle because he was born after his mother died, and he must be nurtured so that he can be the savior of humanity. He realizes the radio is broken when she says there might be ports open in the north. She says it won't be easy since he doesn't speak French. Isabel tries to plead with Daryl to stay with them and help Laurent. As he gets to the gate, Laurent says they will see him again. He's not wrong. While he's on the road, Codron and his men drive up. Daryl hides and watches them pass. Codron knocks on the gate and asks about an American. He won't take no for an answer and demands to come inside. Isabel locks Laurent in the office and tells him not to come out, naturally. As they search the abbey, Codron heads directly to Pergine's office and he hears something inside. Thankfully, one of his men finds Pergine in the cell. Codron orders his men to kill the walker in exchange for information about the American. The Reverend Mother pleads with the soldiers she knows them and knows their families. Laurent runs out just as Pergine is killed. Codron wants to know why they have a boy with them and decides to take him with them. That's when Daryl arrives and kills one of the men. This gives Isabel time to get him to safety. The nuns face off with Codron's men, including Sylvie, who stabs one of the men in anger after they shoot several. Of her sisters, Daryl and Codron fight inside the abbey after managing to shoot him in the shoulder. Daryl chases Codron outside and watches as he retreats. After surveying the carnage inside the abbey, Daryl starts to see things differently. Codron's men were willing to kill a group of nuns. Can he really turn his back on Laurent? Daryl finds Isabel with Sister Veronique, who is dying from a wound sustained in battle. She asks Daryl if he still struggles to believe in the mission. Later, Isabel. Sylvie and Laurent sing to honor their fallen friends. They're with the angels now. Lawrence says, while Sylvie sings. Daryl tells Isabel that he got there after running into some bad people and that didn't go well. Then he ended up in France and he ran into a nun. He asks if she can take him to the port and then he agrees to take them to safety below. Codron watches them. Up north, in La Haver, Janet arrives to talk to the boat captain. Her father used to fish those same waters and she knows that a crew is only as good as their captain. The doctor tells her that their experiments are almost all ruined. We see a bunch of walkers being led from freight containers. She's upset that one man, one American, ruined everything. He says he stopped the mutiny and she's not impressed. He thinks the man went overboard. His name was Dixon. She sends her men to find him. In a flashback, Isabel stands on a rooftop outside of a club looking out over Paris. Inside, Isabel briefly dances with another patron and has a drink with an older man before snorting cocaine and returning to dancing with various men. Throughout all of it, Isabel appears listless and unhappy. Leaving, Isabel goes through the things that she has stolen from club patrons, including a couple of credit cards and watches. As Isabel stares at her reflection for a moment, there's suddenly the sound of screams and walker growls coming from the club. Isabel downs some pills to relax herself and leaves. Outside, Isabel smokes a cigarette while looking out at the Eiffel Tower. Hearing more screams, Isabel spots a man nearby being attacked a walker and bitten in the arm, as screaming bystanders flee. Another man is hit by a car and injured in the chaos and Isabel leaves but she finds walkers attacking frightened commuters in a Paris subway train. A few more walkers enter the platform and Isabel flees onto the streets where chaos has erupted. Monument Day, the start of the global outbreak, has begun. Seeing a man who was hit by an upside-down car, Isabel goes to try to help him, but the man reanimates and chases after her. Quinn suddenly hits the walker with his car and drives off with Isabel just before two can close, and on her, in the present. Laurent plays in a field while Daryl and Isabel go over their route to Paris on a map. While Daryl wants to take a route that's a straight shot to Paris, Isabel wants to detour to Angers where there's a man with a radio who can connect them 
to the Union of Hope's People in the North. Daryl argues against it as Paris was the priest's plan and going to Angers will take longer. But Isabel simply tells him that the plan has changed. In a flashback, the next morning Quinn tells Isabel that Paris is Bedlam, but his friend Ollie has a place in the Dordogne where they can stay as long as they want. However, Isabel isn't willing to just go, claiming that she needs to go home and change her clothes, which Quinn agrees to, giving her 10 minutes once they arrive in her apartment. Isabel frantically collects a hidden box of cash and calls for her sister Lily who is unaware of the chaos going on. Isabel informs Quinn that she won't leave her sister behind, and she speaks with her young neighbor Amy as Quinn helps Lily get her stuff into the car. The little girl tells Isabel that her father didn't come home last night and her mother's crying. On the phone, Isabel tells Amy to go back to her apartment, promising Amy that her mother will look after her and making the little girl promise to stay inside. Isabel, Quinn, and Lily leave as Isabel looks around at the unfolding chaos in Paris. In the present, Daryl, Isabel, Laurent, and Sylvie ride a mule-drawn cart through a village where Laurent rather morbidly answers Sylvie's attempt to get him to guess what person she's talking about by stating that it's a dead person since everyone else that Sylvie knows is dead. When Lauren asks what kind of a death he would prefer, Daryl sarcastically suggests a quiet one. The mule suddenly stops in the middle of the road and refuses to go any further. Asterix's whining draws out a herd and Daryl wonders how to shut him up. But Lauren tells him that the mule is very stubborn. With no other choice and over Isabel's objections that Lauren loves the mule, Daryl aunties Asterix and fires his gun into the air, scaring the mule into charging straight through the herd, drawing it away. Isabel lies to Lauren that Asterix will be fine as he's faster than the walkers. And Daryl has everyone gather their belongings and move out in the other direction. On the road, Laurent continues to express concern for Asterix, but Isabel reassures him that the mule is too smart to get lost and that he probably went to the apple orchard that they had passed. However, Daryl urges Isabel to tell the boy the truth as he has to learn sometime. Recognizing that Daryl doesn't have children of his own, Isabel tells him that the truth can wait. Suddenly, the sound of whistling surrounds the group before an arrow flies into a pole in front of them. Daryl chases the shooter into a nearby building where he's ambushed and captured by a group of masked children armed with makeshift spears. Having captured the entire group and their cart, the children lead them to a fortified preschool where they chant and howl as their leader Lou comes. To join them, Isabel explains that they're religious people whose mule broke down and they got stuck. After Isabel clarifies that they're nuns, Lou challenges them to be able to recite St. Joseph's Prayer for mothers and fathers, which Isabel, Sylvie, and Laurent immediately do, although Daryl, unable to understand the conversation, doesn't. When questioned about Daryl, Isabel claims that he's an American priest named Father Daryl who was sent to France on a mission long, but he doesn't speak French even after all of this time. Satisfied, Lou has Daryl released and his weapons returned announcing to the children that they will practice their English shout of respect to Daryl. Daryl is unamused about being dubbed Father Daryl by Isabel. Lou shows the group around the classrooms, explaining that there's 18 children now. The day that the outbreak started, the older children were dropped off at school. But while some of them were picked up at the end of the day, the parents of the rest never came. After briefly stopping to admonish Cricket, who is supposed to be helping to cook dinner, Lou tells Isabel that the younger children, two of whom attach themselves to Daryl, are orphans that they've found over the years. Karini was left at the school in a basket and Dimitri was found lost in the woods. They survive by hunting, growing food and fixing old clothes as well as keeping up with their lessons. Daryl compliments that they're not bad for being little road bandits. Lou takes them into a room where an old woman, Madame Du Bois, lies in a bed. Lou explains that she is their parents and nurse and taught them everything before she got sick six months ago. The children read to Madame Du Bois and sing and recite a prayer from Isaiah for the sick and dying. Although Lou believes that their prayers will be answered and Madame Du Bois will be saved. Although Daryl and Isabel don't say anything. The grave look that they share with each other shows that they know that Madame Du Bois won't survive. Everyone sits down together to a dinner cooked by a line, the children's chef. Laurent tries to sit next to Moof and make conversation with him, but Moof angrily rejects Laurent's overtures, 
telling the younger boy that the chair is for his brother. Lu apologizes, explaining that two of their brothers are off on a mission right now. Lu asks Father Daryl to lead them in a prayer of thanks which he awkwardly does um, Lord. I'm sure you have your reasons for turning the whole world upside down. Maybe we deserve it. For being so mean to each other, we probably do deserve it, but not tonight. No, tonight is good. And if this isn't good enough for you, I don't know what is. Amen. The kids are impressed as Daryl sounds like Madame Du Bois who says that their manners are like a mirror that shows their portrait. Daryl proceeds to just slurp his soup with the kids following suit with a laugh. After dinner, Lou asks what they will do now that they've lost their mule. But Lauren tells her that the mule isn't lost but eating apples, causing the other kids to laugh at him before a line leads Lauren to weigh. Daryl asks where they can find another one and Moof suggests La Terrasque which Sylvie explains is a lizard, like a dragon from old stories. However, this one is not a story, but rather he's a real man, although he's still a monster. Lateris lives in a nearby castle and he has horses that he used to take everything from the village such as food and fuel from every house and every shop. The kids once tried a raid to get supplies, but it didn't work out well for them. Lou refuses to Daryl where this castle is telling him that it's too dangerous and they won't go there again. Daryl suggests that they could save Madame Du Bois since if La Terrace graded all of the drugstores, then he's got all of the medicine. The kids can pray all that they like, but Madame Du Bois will die without proper medicine. Moof wants to join them, and he angrily storms off when Lou refuses to let him join them, agreeing to go with Daryl by herself in the morning. That night, everyone gathers to watch Mork and Mindy, which is powered by Satcha pedaling on a bike. Initially excited, Daryl slowly gets more somber as the show goes on, which Isabel notices. Lying in bed later, Daryl admits that he lied and medicine won't help Madame Du Bois, but they just need that horse. Daryl quotes Isabel about how the truth can wait, but Isabel tells him that it was a mule before while this is the children's teacher. Daryl states that they just need to get to the radio, which is too far to walk, and Isabel recognizes that it's so that he can go home. Isabel feels sorry for the children who don't know what the world was like before, but Daryl sadly points out that you can't miss what you never had. Daryl reveals that he had used to watch Mork and Mindy with Merle when they were young. Daryl and Merle had loved that show which used to make everything just a little bit better for them. Isabel admits that she understands wanting to escape. In a flashback, Isabelle, Quinn, and Lily drive through the French countryside. On the radio, an announcer orders people to stay in their homes and not to hoard supplies. No looting and robbery won't be allowed. Isabelle makes them stop at a gas station after Lily feels sick and Quinn hides a gun in the back of his pants. Quinn offers to get Lily to a doctor, but she refuses, insisting that she only needs a minute. Lily throws up, hitting Quinn, and admits that her stomach hurts. Looking at Lily's enlarged stomach, Isabel realizes that her sister's pregnant and Lily admits that it's been a few months, and she apologizes for not telling Isabel sooner because she was scared. Pulling Isabel aside, Quinn tells her that they can't take Lily with them, in that condition because they're going somewhere secluded where there's no baby hospitals. They have to stay mobile, as it's not safe and they can drop Lily off somewhere safe along the way such as a clinic. Reminding Isabel that he always takes care of her, Quinn tells her to trust him. Under the guise of a hug, Isabel steals Quinn's car keys from his pocket and pretends to agree with him, while Quinn goes to make a few calls and find Lily somewhere safe. Isabel steals his car and drives off with her sister. In the present, on the road the next morning, Lou reveals that she knows that Daryl's not a priest as it's pretty obvious. Daryl tells the girl that how he got to France is a long story and the only part that matters is that Daryl gets home to his people. Lou quotes Madame Du Bois that family are the people that you're with, and Daryl admits that she sounds like she was a good teacher. However, Lou still believes that Madame Du Bois will get better thanks to Daryl and Lou tells him that they're almost there. At the school, Laurent plays hide and go seek with the other children as Haibu counts. Haibu quickly finds Laurent as he's not in a good hiding place, and Laurent tells her that the nuns never find him at the abbey and he always wins there. Renard asks why he was at the abbey anyways, and Laurent explains that after his mother went to be with the angels, his father was falsely imprisoned and joined the foreign legion to fight the hungry ones. His father was a hero who gave his life for a free France and he even won a medal. 
The other children laugh at Laurent and Renard sarcastically asks if his father was like the Count of Monte Cristo while Haibu points out that the story sounds made up. Laurent insists that it's not but Renard tells him that those penguins trick you. Laurent and the kids make fun of Laurent for his naivety. Haibu leads the other kids off to hunt Le Beat de Gavadin, or the Beast of Gavadin. Watching through a window, Sylvie tells Isabelle, who is tending to Madame Du Bois, that Laurent is playing with the other children which she is pleased about as Laurent. Is making friends? Sylvie warns her that Laurent wonders about who he is, where he comes from and how he fits into the world. Isabelle asks if Sylvie wondered the same things about herself which she confirms. Isabelle promises her friend that up north, the two of them and Laurent will all know how they fit into everything which is why they're going, to find their purpose. In a flashback, Lily panics that something is wrong with her baby because she's in pain, spotting an ambulance parked up ahead. Isabelle decides to stop in the hopes that the paramedics can help them. However, walkers appear from behind the ambulance and the two women are quickly forced to flee. In the present, armed with a knife, Laurent walks through the woods and spots a few walkers moving away from where a dog is eating Asterix's partially devoured corpse. Lawrence scares the dog off and apologizes to the mule for not being there for him, as they come within sight of La Tarosk's castle. Daryl asks Lou about the raid that she had talked about and she explains that three of the kids, including herself, went after La Tarosk and only she ever came home. One of the others who went was Moof's brother and Lou has been lying. To the others that Moof's brother and the other kid went for help and that they'll come back. With Madame Du Bois sick, she didn't know what else to say which Daryl gets. The two find the castle's drawbridge up and the moat filled with a herd of walkers. In a flashback, during a thunderstorm, Isabelle drives up to the abbey, confident that the nuns have to take them in. Berenice greets them at the gate along with a young Sylvie, explaining that Sylvie is her student who believed that they were her parents coming to pick her up. Pergine introduces himself and notices that Lily was bitten on the arm by one of the walkers. On the roadside, the nuns treat Lily's bite and Pergine tells her to get changed into a gown. Isabel is upset that her sister is seven months pregnant and kept it from her. But Lily explains that she was afraid that Isabel would be mad at her. Isabel asks who the father is, but Lily is interrupted by a contraction and Isabel soothes her sister by singing all the wet which their mother had used. To calm them down at bedtime, Isabel helps Lily change into the gown and Lily acknowledges that her sister has taken good care of her ever since their parents died. Lily makes Isabel promise to look after her baby for her. In the present, Isabel and Sylvie find Asterix's body and Laurent angrily accuses them of lying to him. Laurent walks off, chased by Sylvie, in a toolsht. Daryl and Lou look for something to help them cross the moat. Although they find a rope and something to use as a hook, Daryl asks Lou to find a bigger one, and then locks her in telling Lou that she'll be safer in there and Daryl is better off on his own. Daryl uses his makeshift rope and hook to climb the drawbridge and finds a storeroom loaded with supplies that he begins gathering. Daryl hears a voice from another room yelling at La Terrasque to be let out and finds a teenage boy locked in a dungeon who reveals that he speaks English. Daryl realizes that it's one of the kids from the raid and the boy introduces himself as Harrison which Daryl has trouble pronouncing leading him to call the boy Hedgehog, the English translation of his name, instead. As they try to leave, La Terrasque opens fire on them from a window. Daryl shows Harrison how to use his rifle and orders the boy to keep. La Terrasque busy while Daryl rushes inside to confront the man. In the tools, Lou is found and released by a hooded figure. As La Terrasque exchanges shots and insults with Harrison, Daryl sneaks up on the man and forces him to disarm himself at knife point. The surprised man reveals himself to be an American from Giddings, Texas named R.J. Gaines. Although R.J. offers Daryl some of the amenities that he has, Daryl furiously confronts R.J. about stealing it from people who need it. R.J. defends himself as just doing whatever it takes to stick it out long enough until he can get back home to the ones that he loves, just like everyone else which is all that matters. Daryl drags R.J. outside where he claims to have never laid a hand on a furious Harrison but the boy points out that R.J. had threatened to shoot him if he tried to leave. While Harrison wants to push R.J. into the moat, Daryl decides to take him back to Lou and let her decide what to do with R.J. R.J. begs him not to as the kids will kill him and he's got a wife and for kids of his own waiting for him back home. 
But Daryl tells him that there ain't no home, asshole as he's been there and that East Coast. Midwest, even Texas. Everybody you know back home is gone, they've been gone a long time. Daryl and Harrison lead a horse-drawn cart full of supplies over the lower drawbridge, dragging RJ tied by a long rope to the back of the cart behind them. RJ desperately continues trying to bribe and an interested Daryl before the side of the cart falls open and several large fuel tanks roll out and into the moat. As RJ taunts them, Daryl goes to secure the remaining supplies and try to fix the damaged wheel and he orders Harrison to shoot RJ if he tries anything. RJ continues taunting the two, offering to help them if they let him go. RJ makes a run for Daryl's gun and the two men struggle over it. Eventually falling off the edge of the drawbridge and into the moat, Daryl immediately draws his knife and mourning star to fight the walkers, but RJ is left dangling helpless within the herd's reach from the rope that he's still attached to. The walkers devour RJ while Daryl retrieves his rifle and shoots the fuel canisters, causing a large explosion that blows up a large number of the walkers, including the walkers gathering behind Daryl while Daryl is protected by crouching behind the corner of the wall. Move tosses down a rope from the top of the wall while Lou and Harrison cover Daryl from the surviving walkers with boughs. Once Daryl's tied onto the rope, Moof has the horse pull him out of the moat. Lou sarcastically asks Daryl if he's still better off by himself and notes that Daryl at least got his horse. Harrison shows a grateful Lou that Daryl got them the medical supplies that they need too. A horrified Moof recognizes one of the walkers in the moat as his brother Julian and realizes that Lou had lied to him about Julian being off on a mission. Moof refuses to leave his brother like that and an emotional Lou raises her bow, but struggles to bring herself to shoot her friend. Sympathetic. Daryl shoots Julian with his crossbow instead and saves Lou from having to put her friend down. Daryl, Lou, Moof and Harrison triumphantly return to the school where the other children celebrate the return of their lost friend. Isabel notes that Daryl's lie worked and Daryl quips that well. I ain't in none as they watch the celebration. Sylvie comes out with the news that Madame Du Bois has died of her illness, and Daryl apologetically admits to the devastated Lou that the meds were never going to help her and that he had lied to get a horse. Lou wonders what they're going to do without her, and Daryl tells the girl to keep doing what they've been doing. The other kids look up to Lou and that's a good thing. Daryl offers to take care of putting Madame Du Bois down, but Lou decides to do it herself as she owes it to the old woman, Daryl. Isabel and Sylvie leave Lou alone as she draws her knife and says goodbye to Madame Du Bois before stabbing her in the head. The children build a memorial to their beloved teacher and Laurent comforts Haibu, telling her that his teacher is also with the angels and then leads the kids. In doing Nanu Nanu from Mork and Mindy, Daryl boards the group's now horse-drawn cart, but Laurent wants to stay at the school with his new friends. Laurent reluctantly agrees to leave complaining to Sylvie that Isabel never listens to him and deciding to walk instead. The children see Daryl's group off as they leave and resume their journey to Paris. A limping Codron walks through the abandoned abbey, stopping briefly to look at the corpses of his men who were just left lying in the courtyard. Codron finds an abandoned gun as well as Daryl's tape recorder and listens to the message that he had recorded on it. Looking through a journal, Codron finds a picture of a two-month-old Laurent as well as the wall map showing the group's route to Paris. On the road, Sylvie tries to get Laurent to get in the cart, but he refuses as Isabel treats him like a baby. Laurent states that some adults speak the truth and some children don't need to be treated like that, but Sylvie argues that he's not like other children and Laurent is special. Giving Isabel the reins, Daryl joins the boy on foot telling Laurent that no one had ever called Daryl special when he was a kid, at least not in a good way. However, Laurent doesn't want to be special, he just wants to be like other kids which Daryl knows. Laurent wonders what it is that makes him so special anyways. In a flashback, Lily goes through labor, assisted by Isabelle, per Jean, Veronique, and another nun. Lily dies in the middle of it from her bite and per Jean prepares to perform an emergency C-section on her in order to save the baby while Isabel desperately calls out to her sister. Lily suddenly begins moving again as she reanimates and Veronique restrains Lily. As the priest performs the C-section, the baby is successfully delivered, albeit not breathing at first, but Jean. Veronique and the other nun manage to revive him which the priest declares to be a miracle. As per Jean begins to perform what appears to be an exorcism on the zombified Lily, 
Isabel carries her newborn nephew past the odd nuns. Finding a statue of St. Laurent, Isabel decides to name her nephew Laurent after the saint. The end of the second episode, Daryl's group arrives and angers where Isabel tells Daryl they can radio for directions on where they should head next. Stopping in front of a theater, Daryl leaves the reins with Laurent and a rifle with Sylvie to protect the horse. Inside, Isabel explains that her contact in Angers is a musician who has been living in this theater for years. The conductor joins them, revealing that he speaks English, and leads them to his radio which has some parts missing. The conductor explains that he used some parts for amplification. The conductor puts on a record, and he leads Daryl and Isabel into the main part of the theater where he excitedly conducts. An orchestra made out of mutilated walkers tied up to various instruments. Having clearly gone insane, outside, Laurent and Sylvie listen to the music with confusion as a walker, dragging a corpse that's been manacled to it, approaches. A frustrated Daryl states that they should have stuck to the plan, calling it a stupid detour. But Isabel believes that it was worth a try. As Isabel struggles to shoot the walker, Daryl and Isabel emerge from the theater, arguing about going to Paris, which Isabel believes to be too dangerous. It's too dangerous everywhere. We did it your way. Now we're gonna do it mine. We're going to Paris, Daryl proclaims. Taking the rifle from Sylvie and shooting the walker in the head, the group rides off in their cart as a herd approaches, drawn by the music and the gunshot. Walking alongside the cart, Lauren asks Daryl if there will be walkers in Paris, which Daryl confirms is likely to be the case. Lauren notes that Daryl is good at fighting them, but Daryl dismissively tells him that everyone is good at something. Daryl brings the cart to a stop as Laurent looks out over Paris from a nearby vantage point and Daryl welcomes the two women home. The group makes their way through the walker-infested streets of Paris with Isabelle and Sylvie pointing out various landmarks to Laurent, including the Pantheon and the ruins of Notre Dame. Daryl notices the word pouvoir and a crest written on a car and Isabelle explains that it's a movement that started after the global outbreak. Most of Paris is under the control of Janet and her guerriers, which Daryl recognizes as the guys who had attacked the Abbey of St. Bernadette. In desperate times, people turn to order or to God. As the group makes their way through the Père Lachaise Cemetery, Lauren tells Daryl about the famous people buried there and about a fable that one of them had written about a weary woodsman who wanted to die, but had a change of heart when death came, instead asking for help carrying his burden so that he can keep going on. Daryl stops to pay his respects to the grave of Jim Morrison, an American rock star who had died in Paris. Noticing Daryl's worried look, Laurent reassures Daryl that he won't die in Paris too. A little further on, the group spots three bodies in the process of being buried and are confronted by the survivors burying them. Isabelle tells Falou Baucar, the man in charge, that truth is hope and that Per Jean had sent them. Falou realizes who Laurent is and asks after Per Jean but Isabel admits that he isn't with them. Noticing Falou's suspicious look at Daryl, Isabel identifies Daryl as a friend who had helped them to get there and who only speaks English. Falou introduces himself and his companions, telling Laurent that they've been waiting a long time to meet him. Falou leads the group to his community living on a greenhouse roof where Daryl asks for a radio that he can use. Falou explains that they take turns at the daily tasks and had welcomed their 64th member a few months before who is a baby girl that was born. As Falou shows them around, Emil asks Sylvie if she had always wanted to be a nun, and she admits that she's never imagined anything else. Emil comments that Sylvie has never been to Paris before and it's a good place to imagine. In the garden, the group observes the Eiffel Tower. In the distance with Laurent telling Daryl how many rivets were used to build. It and Daryl noticing that the famous landmark got the tip knocked off of it. Falou explains that a military helicopter had crashed into it at the start of the outbreak and Laurent muses that it must be magical to stand under it and look up at the sky. At Daryl's prompting, Falou leads Daryl and Isabelle to Antoine who is in charge of the community's homing pigeon method of communication, leaving Daryl incredulous. Antoine sends a message written by Isabelle out but admits that it could be anywhere from a few days to a month to get a response factoring in bad weather. After confirming with Isabel that the nest will take her the rest of the way for the last part of the trip, Daryl declares that his part of the job is done as a pigeon can't help him and without a radio, they can't help him. 
Falou tells Daryl that there are people trading all kinds of things in Paris and he can take Daryl to them. However, they will need currency as even information is a commodity. Daryl is willing to steal something if that's what it takes. But Isabel thinks that she knows where to find something and they'll go there in the morning. The three observe people presenting Laurent with gifts and Daryl is worried that it's a lot to put on a kid. But Isabel feels that God chooses our burdens. Laurent approaches Sonia whose husband had died a few days before and has refused any food or comfort since. While Sonia has been inconsolable to everyone else, she accepts a hug from the boy, causing Falou to declare that Pergin was right about him. Stefan, having apparently recovered from the wounds that he had sustained fighting Daryl, arrives at the Pouvoir base at Maison Mir, pausing briefly to observe experiments being performed on one of the test subjects from the ship. Stefan meets with Janet, introducing himself and revealing that he's from Marseille. Stefan explains that a few years before, a traveler had come through the village and spoken of a movement in Paris that would make the world right again. The man gave Stefan the tattoo and told him that he was now a warrior for Janet. Stefan tells Janet that she can thank him later for getting her what she wants, the American, which she has already been told about. Stefan plays Daryl's recorded message that he had recovered from the Abbey for Janet. Stefan promises to find Daryl for her and to prove his usefulness to her here at Maison Mir. Stefan swears to not stop, having promised his parents when they died to look after his brother, only to have Daryl make him a liar. Janet officially hires Stefan and leads him to the doctor's lab to observe his progress after to other scientists injected the test subject with something. The doctor starts a timer and the group watches as the test subject, who is a cohort variant with pure black eyes, rips its chains out of the concrete walls that they are anchored to, charges the glass and suddenly has blood explode out of its head and chest before collapsing. Once the walker stops growling, the doctor reports to Janet that it took 18 seconds, and she orders the doctor to continue his experiments. Daryl and Isabel make their way through Isabel's old apartment building, which is filled with its zombified residents. The two find Isabel's old apartment wrecked but clear of any walkers. Daryl notes the noisy neighbors and Isabel identifies them as the Garniers who had lived next door. Mrs. Garner had always been trying to set Isabel up with her son. Daryl finds a photo booth strip of Isabel and Quinn in one of the books and Isabel identifies Quinn, stating that she was young and very stupid and Daryl suggests that she upgraded with God. Isabel retrieves a picture of her sister Lily standing near the Eiffel Tower that was taken on Lily's 16th birthday and Laurent has never seen his mother's face, stating that they're here so that she can keep her part of the bargain. Isabel retrieves the box full of her stolen merchandise from the fireplace, including drugs and a gold watch which they can use as trade to get them information on a boat. Seeing how surprised Daryl is by her loot, Isabel quips that she wasn't always a nun. Isabel changes into some of her old clothes while Daryl enjoys the view from her apartment which beats the view from his old house. Isabel recalls how there was a bar at the end of the street where only the regulars, which included artists, musicians, and students, were allowed to stay when the owner pulled the curtains. They thought that they were reinventing the world while never imagining how it would get. Daryl points out that Isabel at least thought about while Daryl himself didn't do much thinking back then. While Daryl seems like someone who is always thinking to Isabel, he admits that he's not. Things happen and things change. Maybe we're the same that way, broken until the world ended, suggests Isabel which Daryl agrees is a possibility. Isabel is glad that their paths crossed and Daryl, seeing a walker in an apartment across the way, decides that they should get going. However, the two find the stairwell to be filled with walkers and Isabel leads Daryl out through. A service entrance in the back which is overgrown with vines. Outside, the two find a zombified young girl tangled in vines and missing her nose. While Daryl draws his knife to put her down, Isabel stops him, recognizing the young girl as her former neighbor Amy. The two skirt around Amy, but the girl's attempts to reach out to Isabel knock over some flower pots. Drawing attention to them, zombified residents crash through their windows to get at Daryl and Isabel. As Daryl desperately tries to open a door which is blocked by more vines, as Isabel is caught between a burner and a small herd of at least five walkers, Daryl suddenly impales the burner in the back with a makeshift spear and holds it up against the vines, using the burner to melt through them. 
Once the door is open, Daryl stabs the burner in the head, recovers his dropped knife, and he and Isabel make their escape just as the small herd closes in on them. Isabel stops to take one last look at the still-trapped Amy, remembering driving away from the little girl on Monument Day along with Quinn and Lily. Waiting for the others to join them, Daryl expresses his condolences to Isabel about Amy and Isabel sadly admits that she had left Amy behind when the outbreak started. Sylvie, Laurent, Falou, and Emile join them, and Isabel gives her nephew the picture of his mother which Laurent shares with Daryl. Falou leads the group to the Paris catacombs where the guard lets them, in an exchange for the group putting their weapons in the freezer. Falou explains to Daryl that the catacombs are where the six million people who died in the Black Death are buried. America is an infant, but here we survived many apocalypses. We will survive this one too, states Falou. The group reaches the Demiman nightclub where Falou tells Daryl that people find all sorts of things there and since Daryl helped the Union of Hope, they will help him in return. Falou goes looking for some friends who might be able to tell something, while Isabel explains to Laurent that it's a nightclub and that they used to have a lot of them. Coco welcomes to the stage Anna Valerie and Laurent, Sylvie, and Emil enjoy her performance while Daryl and Isabel admire a painting hanging on the wall that was saved from a museum. Sylvie and Emil dance together and Emil explains that his grandmother was an Argentinian refugee who had taught him to things to dance and to fight for freedom. Falou calls Daryl and Isabel over to Bernard where they explain that Daryl wants to go to America and, since Daryl came by sea, there must be ships sailing. Bernard acknowledges that they hear things and Rodo has Isabel show them what's in her bag. As someone watches them from a nearby balcony, Bernard is impressed with Isabel's stash and tells Daryl through Isabel that he knows people that can help him. Once Daryl pays him, Bernard promises to take Daryl to a connection who can hook him up. Daryl refuses after seeing the looks that Bernard and Rodo are exchanging with a man across the room, suggesting that they're about to double-cross him and a fight breaks out between Daryl and Bernard after the latter pulls a knife on Daryl. Daryl quickly subdues Bernard before they are interrupted by Quinn, much to the shock of Isabel. Reminding Bernard of the rules against weapons, Quinn slices the man's face in punishment before giving the knife to Coco. Quinn greets Isabel, admitting that it's strange to see her again after so many years and she tells him that her life took some turns. Isabel identifies Daryl as her friend that she's traveling with, and Daryl explains that he's looking for a way back to America. Quinn reveals that it's not impossible to do and that he's heard things. While Anna finishes her performance and is complimented by Laurent on her singing, Laurent shares the picture of his mom with Anna and admits that he wants to see the Eiffel Tower in person himself someday like Lily did on her birthday. Anna gives the boy her Eiffel Tower necklace to remember his mother by. Quinn agrees to ask around and see what. He can find out for his old friend and rejects Isabel's offer of bartering with him. Warren shows them the necklace that Anna had given to him, drawing Quinn's attention when Isabel reveals that he's Lily's son. Quickly pulling her friend aside, Isabel orders Sylvie to take Laurent back to the rooftop with the others, promising to explain later. Daryl asks if his friend is alright, but she just tells him that they made a deal and she'll keep up her end of the deal since Daryl kept up his end of it. Daryl was right, it turns out that Isabel does have connections in Paris. Quinn brushes off Anna's romantic advances and leads Daryl and Isabel to his office, explaining that the nightclub was originally a bunker in World War, to that was occupied by both sides of the conflict. Isabel refuses a glass of champagne and reveals to her former boyfriend that she became a nun. Much to his surprise, Isabel admits that Lily had died giving birth to her baby, which Quinn appears to be genuinely upset by. Much to Daryl and Isabel's shock, Quinn reveals that he's actually Lauren's father and he's angry that his son was kept from him. Isabel admits that Lily had never told her and accuses Quinn of being responsible for her sister's death. Becoming aggressive while Isabel becomes more nervous and submissive, Quinn reminds Isabel that he'd saved her life after Isabel had slit her wrists in the bathtub. Quinn makes it clear that he'll only help Daryl if Isabel and Lawrence stay with him. But Daryl refuses to abandon the two to Quinn for a boat, leaving. Daryl tries to reassure Isabel that they all have bad things in their past that they're trying to run from. But Isabel angrily tells him that she was wrong earlier about them being the same. However, 
Daryl knows that he's not the one that she's really angry at. Isabel reminds Daryl that they're in Paris because Daryl had wanted to come and she's only trying to help Daryl keep his promise. Accusing Daryl of only caring about that, Isabel asked for his help because she needed it but she doesn't and never did need a hero. That night, lying in his bunk at Falou's community, Lauren asks Sylvie what it will be like at the nest, and she reassures him that it will be safe like it used to be. At the Abbey and there will be more people like them who believe the same thing. Lauren tells Sylvie that Sonia had told him that he had made her feel loved, and he doesn't know why. Sylvie explains that it's because Lauren gives people hope and leaves while Lauren studies the picture of his mother. Stefan arrives at Demimond with two armed garriers and Quinn reminds Stefan of his arrangement with Janet that leaves the nightclub off limits to her people. Stefan reveals that they are looking for an American named Daryl Dixon who has been there. Daryl packs up his belongings and Isabel apologizes for her earlier behavior, telling Daryl that she doesn't believe in coincidences and Isabel believes that she had to come back to Paris to see Quinn again and find out the truth. Daryl brushes off Isabel, telling her that she's got Falou's people looking after her now and she doesn't need him anymore. Isabel tells Daryl that Laurent will be sad to see him go, but Daryl just tells her to make something up since she's really good at that. Isabel explains that she had never told Laurent the truth about his birth because everything about it was horrible such as the way that Lily died and the way that Laurent was born. Daryl asks what Isabel will tell Laurent about Quinn because she needs to stop lying to him. Laurent deserves to know who he is and he can then make up his own mind about what he wants to do. Isabel accuses Daryl of not accepting how special he is, but Daryl tells her he's a gift from God, right? Maybe that's something you need to believe, cause the world's so fucked up. Or maybe, he's just a regular kid. A regular kid that got lucky and lived. Maybe that's your miracle. Having overheard their argument, a furious Laurent tells Daryl and Isabel that he hates them both and storms off. Garriers led by Stefan burst in, demanding to know where the American is. Laurent escapes down some scaffolding while Stefan spots Daryl and chases after him and Daryl, orders Isabel to get Laurent and meet him back at her apartment. Daryl reaches the edge of the roof and pauses after spotting a herd below before jumping across to the next building. As Daryl makes his way across the adjacent rooftop, Stefan orders his men to track Daryl and follows Daryl across. Daryl ambushes Stefan, knocking the man's feet out from under him with his morning star and then trying to stab him. The two men engage in a vicious fight that ends with Daryl strangling Stefan from behind. However, before Daryl can kill the man, the Garriers open fire on him, forcing Daryl to grab his weapons and flee. Isabel runs through the building, calling for Laurent. As Daryl hides, the roof beneath him suddenly gives way and Daryl falls into the building below. The end of episode 3. Episode 4 opens with Daryl looking for Laurent, only to find the boy trapped on the other side of a locked gate. Laurent is swarmed by lesser fames, the hungry ones, with no way out. Daryl screams and rattles the gate, but the dead descend on Laurent as he clasps his hands in prayer. Daryl's light illuminates the huddled mass of hungry ones surrounding Laurent and sees the zombies part and walk away. Laurent, still silently praying, is unharmed. He smiles and walks away, leaving Daryl to call out for him in the darkness. Is Laurent immune to zombie bites? Is he the Messiah, as prophesied? Is this a miracle? Suddenly, Daryl's eyes open. He's underwater, walkers clutching at his feet. Daryl stabs the hungry ones gnawing at his boot and swims for the surface, almost as if being baptized. Daryl is in the sewers beneath Montmartre. Nearby, Cadron and the Garrier question Sonia, the grieving widow who was comforted by Laurent when Falou brought his group into the Union D. Lespoir S. Network, to connect them with the nest. Codron learns the American is in service of the Union on a mission to deliver the boy. He's not some kid, Sonia tells Codron. He has a greater purpose. Madame Jennet, leader of Pouvoir Devivance, is surprised to learn the Union's supposed messiah actually exists. I heard about a special boy from Lords. His birth was deemed a miracle. I thought it was. A rumor. A foolish tall tale you all desperately wanted to believe, Jennet says. Cradling a mother's crying baby? The fools are the ones who put their faith in you. Sonia says defiantly, because Laurent will save us all, even you. 
Janet replies, the weak, the submissive, the credulous, it's people like you who got us into this mess. When Kadrin asks if the boy is a danger to the pouvoir, she explains Laurent gives them false hope. It's a disease that must be rooted out. Kadrin vows to find the boy and the American. Elsewhere in Paris, pigeon trainer Antoine alerts Daryl that the Geyer are after Laurent. They came back later in the night. They took people and the rest we run. He says in broken English. We are there, what's the word? Enemy. At Laurent is our hope, you must go to them. Antoine will show Daryl the way to Rue Manuel, where he's supposed to rendezvous with Laurent and Isabelle back at her old apartment. But when Geyer tried to take Antoine's beloved birds, he's gunned down. Daryl quickly avenges Antoine, tossing his blade into the driver's trigger finger before finishing off his compatriot. The birds free. Let them free, Antoine says, dying as Daryl releases the birds from their cage. At the apartment, Isabel tells Daryl she searched all night for Laurent and couldn't find him. Daryl figures he's running and hiding, but Isabel says he doesn't know Paris. Where would he go? Daryl has an idea. Back at the Demiment, Quinn is preoccupied with ex Isabel, to the dismay of club singer Anna. She's gone, Quinn. For good, Anna told him, women need a damn good reason to come back. And sometimes we need a damn good reason to stay. One of Quinn's men report that the Garrier are after the American and Laurent, Quinn's son. In Paris, Daryl and Isabelle follow his lead on Laurent. They make up for their argument at the demiment that caused Laurent to run away. Isabelle admits she should have been honest with her nephew a long time ago. Meanwhile, Laurent arrives at La Dame de Fur the Eiffel Tower, its decaying metal groaning with the wind. He stands where Lily once stood to pose for the only photograph Laurent has of his mother. Laurent peers behind a barricade and sees hundreds of hungry ones walled off inside, which then burst free just as Daryl and Isabel arrive. They fight off a wave of walkers as Laurent hides only for a walker to kneel down and grab at him, while they fight their way out of the horde. Daryl and Isabel fail to stop two men from abducting Laurent. As the car speeds away with the boy inside, one kidnapper is eaten alive, the other will wish for such mercy. Daryl and Isabel take their prisoner to a garage to play good cop, bad cop. Isabel tells Armin she's a nun and asks if his necklace means he's a disciple of God. He used. To be? You're not a guyer, are you? A pouvoir officer? Then do you work directly for Janet? The violence and the killing they must take quite a toll. He stonewalls every question, failing to heed Isabel's offer to walk away knowing he's still capable of grace and mercy. They told me that it's a real party with Olissa, he spits nonstop. But all I'm getting is bullshit about God and Jesus, but the joke is, I know you're just a thieving little slut. Isabel realizes who took Laurent Quinn? Back at the Demiment, Laurent has figured out that Quinn is his father. Isabel told him that his father was a hero for France who went away to fight the hungry ones. That is a bit of a stretch, Quinn admits. But dear old dad says he deserves credit for saving Laurent at the Eiffel Tower. I want to take care of you, he says. Make up for lost time, Laurent asks about Isabel and Daryl. Isabel will join us. Quinn answers, we'll be together soon. As Isabelle attempts to interrogate Armand in French, Daryl gets frustrated when he refuses to answer what Quinn wants with Laurent. Speaking the universal language, Daryl punches Armand in the face, hard, and then again, you know, where I grew up, there was this little boy lived down the street. His name was Jimmy. Jimmy was a runt. They always picked on Jimmy for being so little. His dad was a drunk, I don't think. I ever saw that guy sober. Daryl picks up his knife. One Christmas, Jimmy got a piglet as a present. It used to follow him around like a little dog, even waited for him after school. And then, one Christmas, his dad says he wants him to kill the piglet and eat it for church dinner. Daryl gives Armin to quick stabs with the knife, says if he doesn't, do it his brother is gonna get a beating. So he takes the piglet, ties it up to a tree in the backyard, he wants to make it quick. Painless. Stab, stab. The thing is, by Jimmy not trying to hurt the pig, he ends up hurting him worse. 
stabbed it in the belly, in the back, in the legs, until it just bled out and that pig screamed all night long. All the neighbors heard it, no one else contacted Jimmy. Armin spits it out, he doesn't know what Quinn wants with the boy, but he thinks he can use the kid to get what he wants. He's using Lauren to get to me. Isabel realizes, Daryl wants to know another way into the demiment. When Armin says it's impossible, Daryl warns Isabel you might want to leave. Unless you want to hear this pig scream as Daryl swaps his knife for a crowbar, Isabel says she'll stay. A panicked Armin says it's not so impossible, after all, but it's dangerous. He offers to draw them a map, but Daryl decides to take him with them. He ties his prisoner to a post like a pet pig. That little boy in the story, Isabel asks Daryl, that was you, wasn't it? No. He replies, I made all that shit up. Daryl and Isabel rendezvous with Sylvie, Falou, Emil, Bastin, and Nadine. It's decided the two nuns will go to Pont D, La Tournelle, the Tournelle bridge over the river Seine, to meet Aslan, a man from the nest who will be waiting for them with a boat. Falou isn't letting Daryl take Armand into the Demimond alone and rallies the troops. A threat to one of us is a threat to all of us, and so we go into this fight as a unit, working in defense of L'Union de l'Espoir. Go in as one, come back as one, go in as one. Come back as, one. Sylvie shares a kiss with Emil. There's something I wanted to tell you. Isabel says to Daryl. He tells her to wait until they're at the river and leaves with Armand. Later, at Pont de la Tournelle. Sylvie asks Isabel if she's ever had romantic feelings for anyone since she took vows. Sylvie suspects Isabel has those feelings for Daryl. What you saw was concern. She explains, for him, for Laurent, do you like him? Emil, Sylvie says their kiss was nice but confusing. She's considering staying in Paris to be part of the community Emil is helping Falou to build. Aslan arrives and speaks the code truth is hope. At the demiment, Quinn meets with Janet and Codron to negotiate for the American. Janet offers a reward a stash of weapons, 20 bushels of corn, and a case of Calvados brandy. Quinn wants her Monet. Japanese footbridge. An impressionism piece Janet hand waves as degenerate art. Deal. And the boy, Quinn says he doesn't have him, but they're searching. In private, Codron asks if she thinks Quinn will deliver the American to the pouvoir. Quinn is a transactional man, she answers, but that doesn't solve our other problem. We can't let that child out of Paris. Anna realizes Quinn didn't give up Laurent because he wants to use the boy to get Isabel back. I only told you about his Eiffel Tower thing so we could get the reward, she says with venom. Not locking him alone in some fucking room, Quinn hands her a gun and tells her to keep Lawrence safe. Outside, Armand leads Daryl to a hatch on train tracks and there's the danger less of fames. Damn good, Daryl grumbles. Back inside, Anna asks if she's supposed to babysit while Quinn finds the American. I won't have to find him, Quinn says. He's coming to me. As Daryl and Armin sneak through an access tunnel beneath the demiment, Falou, Emil, Bastin, and Nadine assault the front entrance of the club with gunfire and Molotov cocktails. Armin strikes Daryl and makes a run for it. But doesn't get far, Daryl trails Armin into the tunnels and finds him with his leg busted. Damn, you're an idiot. Daryl tells him, Armand offers a crude swear in response and begs Daryl for help. Daryl gets directions out of the tunnel, fork left, take the tunnel to Unny Trap, a door, and leaves Armand for the hungry ones. Bon appetite, the entrance to the demiment is a war zone. Emil gets shot in the thigh. Falou wants to extract him from the tunnel entrance, but he wants to finish the job. As Daryl makes his way inside the club, Anna talks with Laurent about the Eiffel Tower. He sure la dame de fur, the Iron Lady, will be beautiful again someday. She hopes he gets to go home. You're nice, but you don't want people to know that. He tells her, gut feeling. She smiles. You're a good kid. But I bet everyone knows that. Daryl finally finds Laurent, who asks about Isabel. They're leaving. So Laurent turns to give Anna back her charm of the Eiffel Tower only to see her with a gun. On them, just go. She shouts, go. 
Quinn realizes the assault on the entrance is a diversion and makes his way through the demiment to Daryl. They fight, but the Brit is beat by the American as Daryl slams his head into a rail. Daryl draws his knife, puts it to Quinn's throat, and with Laurent watching, knocks Quinn out instead. Back at Pont de la Tournelle, Falou escorts the wounded Emile to the river. In French, he warns Isabelle that Madame Jennet is posting guards at the city limits. Soon there will be no way out of Paris. Isabelle's prayers are answered as Daryl arrives. At the river with Laurent, she thanks Daryl, but with Aslan waiting, she doesn't board the boat, the Garrier are overtaking the city. I need someone with influence, someone who can make sure that they let him pass. She explains, she needs Quinn. He knows how to make things happen, he'll do it for me. He'll do it for me if I stay. Daryl decides if she's staying, he's staying with her. He can handle Quinn, this isn't about you. It's not about me, she says, it's about Laurent. If it's Laurent we're talking about, he yells then get on the damn boat. If she gets on the boat, none of them make it out? Isabel staying behind with Quinn is the only way to ensure Laurent makes. It passed Janet's garrier and out of Paris. I know this isn't your fight. I know you should be on your way home by now. But there's no one else who can take him to the nest safely, please. Daryl tells Isabel she can't stay with Quinn, but he's a means to an end. Once she knows her nephew is safe, she'll figure a way out. She's done it before. In a guarded goodbye, Daryl says I guess this it, then, and she says, I hope not. But if it is, I hope you make it home. Lauren hugs Isabel goodbye, but he has a harder time letting go. I promise you, she says, meaning every word. I will do everything in my power to get back to you. She's lied to him before, but she's telling the truth, and she needs him to trust her now. The boy begs Isabel to come with him and Daryl, but she has to stay. He appeals to Sylvie, and the answer is the same, goodbye, little brother. We'll meet again. Sylvie assures him. I promise, with that, Daryl and Laurent depart on Aslin's boat. Isabel returns to the Demiment, alone, and studies less Nanufers, the water lilies, the painting she would visit any time she was sad and lonely. At Alox signs on the Seine, as Lynn's boat crosses under the Pont de Grenelle Bridge. Daryl and Lauren sit in silence as they sail past the Statue of Liberty replica Liberty enlightening the world. The end of episode 4. As Daryl and Lauren continue their journey with Aslan, via boat, audiences learn more about how Daryl arrived in France through a series of flashbacks. Turns out Daryl ran out of gas for his motorcycle attempting to return home on foot. It's not long before a vehicle finds him, offering a way for him to get fuel for his motorcycle. In order to do so, Daryl is hired along with others to round up fresh walkers in Maine, all per instruction of their boss and a man who speaks French. Considering Daryl has many years of experience, he's able to round up a multitude of walkers, drawing the attention of a young man the young man is trying to find a way back to his girlfriend and her father but is struggling. Daryl, prone to working alone and focused on getting back home, isn't keen on helping him. Over time he grows fond of the young man, even teaching him how to properly cut wood with an axe. Noticing a working radio, Daryl attempts to contact home. When there is no response he's about to leave when suddenly, a voice replies. It's Carol and she keeps the conversation to a minimum, answering Daryl's questions without issue. Worried that something could be wrong, Daryl promises Carol that he'll be returning home soon. As Static begins to interfere with their conversation, it is revealed that something is going on with Rick. Doubting his own ears, Daryl asks her to elaborate but the conversation comes to an end. Things only get worse for Daryl when he discovers the young man has become a walker. The men had killed him so that they could have another fresh walker to bring in. The brief brawl between Daryl and the murderers causes them to be captured and sent to a boat. While there Daryl finds more captured people, plenty of walkers and security. Walkers seem to be divided up into ones that are fed often and ones who aren't. It's not long before one of the men who arrived with Daryl is fed to the walkers. In the fed category, it's obvious that everyone in Daryl's group is going to be food for walkers. Being clever, 
Daryl and the only other man left in their cell trick the security guards and make their escape for a lifeboat. In the process Daryl starts releasing many of the walkers but didn't expect a very fast, scary, and violent walker variant. As he and the other man struggle to release the lifeboat amongst the chaos, this walker variant attacks the man, who in the process, releases the lifeboat. Not having another option, Daryl jumps off the boat, in the hopes of landing on the lifeboat. Now that we know how Daryl came to France, we can focus on the present. As the trio arrive to a safe place to stay for the night, Lauren wants to get to know Daryl better. In the process Daryl talks about his friends back home, mentioning Judith, RJ, Connie, Ezekiel and Carol. Throughout their stay, Daryl tries to learn more about the nest, but Aslan keeps that information rather vague. However, Aslan does admit that the nest helped him when he lost his family in the apocalypse. Daryl and Lauren bond more as Daryl tries to teach him practical skills that Lauren feels go against God's teachings. Later that night, Lauren says a prayer for Daryl's friends and family as they settle in. Their night takes a terrible turn when walkers emerge and Aslan manages to impale his back on a telephone pole. Now Daryl and Lauren will have to continue onward without him, except, where did their boat go? Daryl realizes almost immediately that Lauren cut the rope, releasing the boat. After brutally scolding him, bringing about the rage of the Walking Dead season 1 Daryl, Lauren confesses that he doesn't want Daryl to leave him. At this point Lauren has lost Isabel to Quinn, the nuns at the convent to Codron, even Aslan to Walkers. He's afraid he'll lose Daryl too. Daryl quickly apologizes and the two continue onward. Meanwhile, Isabel wakes up in a beautiful mansion, obviously Quinn's home. Immediately frazzled upon hearing she was given medicine to help her sleep, it doesn't take long for Quinn to arrive to check on her. It's obvious to him that Isabel does not want to be there and only did. So for Lauren and Daryl's sake, Quinn assures her that both made it out of Paris safely, questioning her relations with Daryl. When Quinn isn't with Isabel, she is essentially a prisoner in a palace but makes do creating a makeshift weapon out of a mirror frame. She ponders her situation, considering killing Quinn after they share a nice dinner together in her room. Knowing that Quinn wants the relationship they once had, she wants to use the opportunity of seduction to kill him. That is until she becomes conflicted over whether Quinn is a changed man or not. There is some obvious fear and caution on Isabel's part when it comes to Quinn. She decidedly doesn't kill him. And Quinn accepts that she isn't ready to start over with him just yet. We quickly learn that Isabel's presence however ends up costing Quinn. Isabel returns to her dark suicidal thoughts when her breakfast arrives the next day. Isabel receives a secret message with her breakfast and asks Quinn if she can attend his special occasion with Janet, the leader of Power of the Living. He agrees and gifts her a stunning piece of jewelry that no doubt was left behind when the world ended. They arrive to find many citizens celebrating, amongst them Sylvie and Emile hiding in plain sight. Unfortunately for Quinn, Janet isn't happy to see him. Knowing full well he's responsible for paying off one of her men into allowing Daryl and Laurent to escape Paris. That man has been dealt with. How did Janet find out? Why Anna of course ratted him out, tired of being ignored and obviously jealous of Isabel. While there, Isabel spots Daryl in a cell as well. We learn that after Daryl apologizes to Laurent, they hear a vehicle coming. Laurent drops some of his belongings as he hides with Daryl. The men stop, find Lawrence's items and begin searching the area. Daryl orders Lauren to remain hidden, no matter what. Like any kid of the apocalypse, Lauren doesn't listen and comes out when he fears the men were going to kill Daryl. The two are brought back to Janet, where Isabel later reunites with him. Knowing an opportunity when she sees one, Janet rather keeps Lauren alive, in order to use him for her cause. Although Lauren doesn't want to, Isabel instructs that he has to. The episode decidedly wraps up in a stunning cliffhanger. As Janet speaks before a large audience, Daryl is removed from his cell and brought into the room. Below Janet is an arena where the audience is ready for quite a show, which includes Codron, Isabel and Laurent. Given only a medieval axe as a weapon, Darley awaits a chained walker. After it is injected with the same serum we've seen used previously on this show, 
the walker becomes superpowered. The once gnarling, hungry walker is now stronger, more vicious and unstoppable. Daryl takes his axe ready to fight just as the walker breaks free, charging at our hero. End of episode 5 The episode opens with a haunting image of dead World War II soldiers. The sound of gunfire and explosion mixed with chanting and Codron shouting Dixon. Echo in the background. Back to the present day, Codron assures Daryl that he'll die today for the death of his brother. The enhanced walker is set loose in the pit, and the fun begins. Combined with being a burner walker, a runner and extremely strong, the walker is winning by a landslide, to Janet's enjoyment. But the Walking Dead franchise would never let its moneymaker die. So Daryl manages to defeat the walker with the end of a French flag patriotism at its finest. The soldiers bring out Quinn, chaining him up to Daryl. The two believe they're fighting against each other. But a few more enhanced walkers are brought out. Daryl and Quinn work together to defeat the walkers, who actually try to kill each other in the end. A flaw in the formula, it seems. The crowd cheers for Daryl as Falu shoots a soldier from above. Janet sends Codrin to find Daryl, who has escaped with Quinn. An exhausted Quinn reveals a walker bite on his back, which he tries to play off as a burn. Isabel and Lauren are taken back to a cell where Lauren expresses his loss of faith. He's beginning to question whether God has abandoned them. To which Isabel proves him wrong she pickpocketed the keys off of the soldiers, setting them free. Meanwhile, Daryl amputates Quinn's arm to cut them both loose from each other. When soldiers find them, Quinn sacrifices himself to give Daryl time to escape. Daryl meets up with Falou, Sylvie and Emile outside and they form a plan to find Isabel and Laurent in the cell blocks. Daryl eventually finds Isabel and Laurent, but they're separated by a locked gate. A zombified Quinn attacks Isabel, and the only one who can save her is Laurent. But Laurent, as any frightened child would be, hesitates. Daryl encourages him to kill Quinn, telling him God will forgive him. This is the motivation Laurent needs to kill his zombified father. Sylvie and Emile say their goodbyes as they're all in the clear. Falou and Emile must return to their community as Janet's people put up their defenses around the country. On the road, Sylvie asks Daryl if he's ever been in love in a random out of the blue moment. As expected, he avoids the question. The things this show will do to bring up Daryl's romantic life, which in retrospect shouldn't be as important as it's made it to be, has officially become exhausting. Daryl and Isabel bond as Daryl tries to fix the truck. She jokes that her father gave up trying to teach her how to change a tire after two hours. While Daryl said his father refused to let him mean if he couldn't put an engine back together. He says that history repeated itself with his family. His grandfather died. On D-Day during the Normandy invasion. Leaving Daryl's father without a paternal figure in his life. In Daryl's mind. If you grew up without a father, you're cursed to continue the cycle, which comes into importance later in the episode. Isabel confesses to Daryl the truth about the picture Lauren drew of Daryl before he arrived. In France in the premiere, she asked Lauren to draw the picture when he arrived at the Abbey to convince Daryl to help them. Codrin and other soldiers confront the group. Codrin is ordered to kill Lauren, but even he knows this is taking it too far. He got into this game to kill Daryl never a child. After Lauren tells Codrin that God loves him, Codrin kills the rest of the soldiers. He spares their lives, declaring that if they ever cross paths again, he'll kill Daryl. He gives them directions to the nest at Mont Saint Michel, with his last instructions being to burn the truck so they're not easily traced. The group arrives at the nest at last and are greeted by its leader, Losang. Dozens, possibly hundreds, of people reside at the nest as well. Losan came to France in the 90s as a student from New Jersey, which he jokes is his dirty little secret. Isabel awakes in the infirmary, being treated for a stab wound, and finds Daryl teaching people how to shoot. Daryl finds a sense of community with the people of the nest, even through the language and cultural barriers. He spends more time with Laurent, which makes it all the more difficult when they have to part ways. Lauren's not the only person who doesn't want Daryl to leave Isabel is distraught by the idea of Daryl going back home to America. Even Losang himself says that Daryl has people in France who want him to stay. In the context of just Daryl Dixon, 
It makes sense why Daryl would feel conflicted about his decision to leave. He's been on this journey with them since the start of the show, but in the context of the Walking Dead franchise as a whole. Knowing Daryl has a family he's known for over a decade elsewhere. The struggle to make a choice is odd. The decision should be easy, considering Daryl has much stronger bonds with Carol, Aaron, Judith, etc. Regardless, Daryl doesn't rest too easy, leaving Lauren and Isabel behind, which Losan practically points out. Codron informs Janet that he and his people were ambushed by Daryl, but she presses harder, saying she knows how to spot a liar just by working night shifts in a museum. Whatever that connection is, Codron gives in, saying he couldn't kill Laurent. When he refuses to tell her where the nest is, Janet has him taken to a cell, promising things will get worse from there, and declares war on the Union of Hope. Isabel tries to get Daryl to stay at the nest, saying he left the Commonwealth to see what was out in the world, which is just a straight-up lie. Isabel believes it, but why can't Daryl just say that he left to find Rick Grimes? who was like a brother to him. Why is the show refusing to make this connection? She hits him hard by saying Daryl's acting like his abusive father by abandoning Laurent, which is a pretty low blow. Daryl makes it to the beach, where he frantically searches for his grandfather's grave. He breaks down at the sight of thousands of crosses and stars of David's, on the beach where the soldiers are laid to rest. The boat reaches the horizon that Daryl is supposed to sail on until he's ambushed by walkers. On the beach, Laurent, who's been following him, calls after Daryl. Daryl turns back, breaking the Dixon cycle that his grandfather and father were bound by. In America, Carol stops a man driving Daryl's motorcycle on the road. Carol ties him up in the trunk of the car, and he reveals he traded the bike at a camp not too far away. She leaves him in the trunk, riding the motorcycle to the camp. 